Hello, and welcome to Relatively Crafty, a knitting podcast. I'm your host, Christy. I come to you from the Denver area of Colorado, where I live with my husband, Ron, our two daughters, Tatum and Delaney, our tuxedo kitty, Lilu, and our terrier mix, Sophie. Hi, how are you guys doing? Today is February 16th, I think. Um, yeah, yeah, because the 14th was on Thursday. And, um, and it is mid morning, maybe early afternoon. I'm not really sure. I am a little giddy because I have just finished the final assignment for my biology class that I have been taking for the past seven weeks. I thought that my class was going to be eight weeks, but I found out like two weeks ago that it was only seven weeks, which was such a wonderful thing to discover. Um, I had forgotten that the underclassmen classes, uh, you know, the freshman and sophomore level classes were um, only seven weeks long, and this biology class was like a freshman level class. So, uh, so I didn't have to do eight weeks, I only had to do seven weeks, and now I don't have to do any more weeks because I just turned in my final paper. So I'm done. Yay! <laughs> It was such a rough, it wasn't a rough class. The class itself was really fairly easy. It was um, environmental biology, so it was a lot of uh, common sense and, and minimal uh, research, well, not minimal research, but, but easy to find research. Um, and yeah, it wasn't hard, but it was that on top of working 50 hours a week, um, sometimes even more than 50 hours a week, and dealing with the kids and you know the other things that go on in life. And so I'm really, really glad that it is over. Uh, I still am two measly credits short of my degree, uh, but all I have to do is take one more CLEP test, and it can be an easy CLEP test. In fact, I think I'm going to take the humanities test, which shouldn't be too hard. So in a week or two, I will start studying for that, and then take it, and then I will, I will finally, finally, finally be done with my degree. It's taking me forever. Um, I have to admit that once I got the job that I had always dreamed of, which is the job that I currently have, um, I didn't feel the, the push to finish out those last six credits. Um, and so, so I did get, um, at p procrastinatory, uh, if you will, and uh, and I just kept pushing it off, and and I got lazy. Let's just be honest about it. I was lazy, and I didn't want to have to do it when I had the time, and um, so I'm paying the price now, or I have paid the price, uh, partly paid the price. Now I'm finishing up my paying of the price. I'm completely digressing. I apologize. Uh, if you are looking for me on Ravelry, I am Christy Dash Lael, and on Instagram, I am Christy Lael without the dash. We also have a relatively crafty podcast group on Ravelry, which is almost dead completely. Um, I haven't spent hardly any time in Ravelry, just as a general rule, uh, much less the um, the podcast group. I just haven't had the time, but hopefully, I can change that uh, in the not too distant future. And uh, yeah, this is a knitting podcast, so let's go ahead and get into the knitting. I only have a single FO today, and um, and actually it's been an FO for a couple of weeks now, and I told Ron he couldn't wear them until I podcast about them, uh, and he has been very uh, patient with that, but now it is time to go ahead and show them to you so that I can finally give them to him to wear. And those are his socks. Yay! So this yarn is online uh, with Jojo Ball, jo Jojoba, Jojoba, and something else. Um, I remember people talking about because I couldn't translate the German. Um, I remember people talking about that it, it came with Jojoba and so it Jojoba, Jojoba oil, I guess. And so these should be very soft. Um, they're not. It's it's kind. Of, it feels kind of like Regia or Opal, um, but I don't know what it's going to feel like on his feet. I don't know if maybe that will that will help, or maybe after a washing, it'll like activate stuff. I don't know. But um, if, if you um, are confused. I don't wash and block socks before we wear them because I figure when they're on your feet, they are 
already so okay so i figure the point of blocking is to get it to it to show the 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 beauty of the of the stitch or to get it to be a specific size well when you put it on your foot you kind of get to see the glory of the stitch and the size that you want it to be is the size of your foot and you want to have some negative ease so it, it kind of hugs your foot so I don't really see a point in blocking socks um, and since I knit them fast enough they don't really get dirty in in the knitting process um, it's not like you know a, a sweater or a scarf that you work on for a month or two at a time and it, it, it kind of picks up dirt along the way socks especially this pair of socks um, only take me a week or two so so yeah, all that to say is these have not been washed yet. Uh, but I did really enjoy them. This is actually a sport weight yarn, not a fingery weight yarn, so they knit up very fast. I still knit them on a size one needle, which is what I normally use. I, uh, I use Chow Goo um, Red Lace, the 40 inch fixed circular, and a US one. It's my go-to sock needle. I love, 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 love them, and um, they're pretty much the only ones I ever use. And uh, so I still used a US-1, uh, so the, the gauge is a little bit tighter, which is completely fine, uh, and they knit up faster because the yarn is a little bit thicker. So these knit up very fast. I did them with my normal um, recipe. You can see that I did make them match. I had plenty of yarn. Uh, there was It was a 100 gram ball, and um, and I knew I wasn't going to use any of the leftovers for anything, so um, I went ahead and took out a bunch to to kind of make sure that I ended at the right spot. But um, I did a Turkish toe cast on, I did a fish lips kiss heel, and then I think I did 15 rows of one by one ribbing with Jenny's surprisingly stretchy bind off. Ron really likes his legs to be very long, as you can tell, and so um, they go they go above my my sock blockers. Uh, but those are done, and now he can wear them. And that is my only F.O., but I have been working on things. I just haven't gotten anything finished. I might have had these started last week, or last time I podcast. I'm not sure. I think I did. Um, and I had planned on finishing this pair before I started Ron's, but, uh, but I just got tied up in rods. I just had more fun knitting those, so I put these ones on hold for a while. But I have been working on my mom's socks. Here is one completely finished. I love how this yarn is knitting up. This is um, uh, uh, Giddy Yarns. Uh, it's one of her sock sets, so it came with a 50 gram main color and then a 20 gram mini that uh, coordinates, obviously. The colorway is Ballerina. And look at those speckles. Are those not just adorable? I I just love how this is working up. Uh, it's just it's it's a perfect perfect sock for my mom. Um, she loves purple. She loves a good teal blue, and she loves pink. So these will get lots of wear. And my mom is the type of person who matches her socks to her shirts. So um, she has a lot of shirts in these colors, and now she has another pair of socks that she can wear to match along. So I have one done, and then I have the um, second one cast on, but it only has a toe and a little bit. Um, but it should get finished um, before, definitely should be finished before I start, um, before I podcast next. And for those of you who are not familiar, I put... Um, these little, and I'm not the only one who does this. This is like a common thing for, for people to do now. Um, but these little eye um, light bulb stitch markers, I put it every 10 rows so that when I make the second one, I know exactly how long to make it. And I basically just knit 10 rows and then I take this one off and put it on the second sock and then knit another 10 rows and take this one off and put it on the second sock. So when I get to where I run out of light bulbs, I know that I am ready to move on to the next part of the sock. So yeah, that's how I do it. So there is that. Um, I guess I should have announced that we were going into whips. Apologize for that. Uh, other whips. Okay. I have, 
I have been working on the um, the Brunswick that um, which is a pattern by Marie Green that I have been knitting for Lauren at Lolo Did It. Um, I was working on that solely and then um, had to have put it on hold because we had a, um, a measuring uh, need. Uh, there was a, a special spot in the pattern that I had to know a measurement of and without knowing the recipient. Uh, personally, I didn't know how long to make it. So this is where I am at. As you can see, I have taken off the sleeves. So they are now off and I've gone about an inch from that point. Um, but I, I love the way it looks and I really, really like her increase uh, raglan increases. Uh, completely different than the ones that I have done in the past. Um, it, it involved a little bit more uh, a little bit more attention to be paid to it because it wasn't just a, a traditional you know increase at four points um, every other row and then the odd row is just a knit row. This was different but I do think that it came out wonderfully and I do like um of course I you know I can only say that I like how it looks now um but we'll see I really think that I'm gonna like the way that it kind of adjusts for the way that the body increases at certain points so so yes and I'm loving the way that this yarn is knitting up look at how beautiful that is this is uh Lolo did it of course in her solo base s-o capital l-o and um, this color that I am using is like BBSLN. Um, it looks like this in the skein. And I am alternating skeins. And I am using the helical, helical um, uh, technique for that. And I will actually get more into that in just a minute. But... Um, but yeah, it's working out. Oops, it's sagging right now, but it's working out nicely. And I will, now that I, I have gotten the size that I need, the, the measurement that I need, I will get back into that and uh, hopefully, hopefully have a lot more of that done before um, I podcast next as well. And then the last thing that I am working on is my hippo, scrappy hippo sweater. Um, because I had to put the uh, Brunswick on hold, I went ahead and grabbed my scrappy hippo sweater and started working on that. And I have made a lot of progress since the last time we talked. I don't know that I'm going to be able to get it all in. Let me see if I can push you guys back so you can see more of it. There we go. Oh, so I've got... Loads done, as you can tell. I'm, oh gosh, what is that, like eight inches maybe from taking the sleeves off? I basically, it's like, I don't know, maybe that much above the waistband of my pants, like where my pants start. So um, I'm still, I've still got several inches left to go. Uh, and then, because I want it to be nice and long. Um, and then I'm going to do, I think I'm going to do some short row shaping to make the back a little bit longer than the front. But, um, but yeah, it's working out nicely. Uh, you can see <laughs> there is a yellow stripe here, which is kind of a bummer, but I'm not too upset about it. It happened when I started... Um, changing colors and I just happened to grab two that had a lot of highlighter yellow in them um, so it's just like a concentration of yellow right there but I'm again this is a sweater that I'm going to be using for kind of comfy wear so it's not something that, that needs to be super fashionable and I'm okay with the extra um, as I mentioned with the Brunswick I am using the Hillicol technique, bring you guys closer again, um, to, to alternate skeins. And 
it is mind-blowing how simple it is and how wonderful it alternates. Um, I will link the tutorial video that I used, if I can find it, uh, but it's it's real, real simple. You, so here is my working yarn. Here is the yarn that I need to switch to, and I switch every row. So basically all you're doing is you're, and I wish I wasn't like right in the middle of, well, I guess it doesn't matter. Anyway, all you're doing is taking this, knitting with this until you are three stitches from the next color. Then you drop that yarn, slip the three stitches over to the new needle, and start knitting with this yarn. So in doing that, every row, three stitches don't get knit. But because it always moves three stitches over, it's never the same three stitches, so it doesn't affect your knitting. And you never have that jog, that line. It's great for um, if you need to make stripes, because you never have that jog there. Um, it just always moves, and it just, you know, moves in a helical pattern. And it's super easy, and it's making um, the ability to really make all of this very modeled very easy, because I'm changing all the time. Every row is changing. And and you don't get, your stuff doesn't get all tangled up, like when you have to do the twisty motion. It It's just so genius. And like things that are truly genius, it's the most simplistic. There's nothing to it. It's one of those things where you're like, I should have thought of that. So, yeah. So there you go. There is my Scrappy Hippo sweater. I am um, probably going to put it on hold now because I need to finish up the Brunswick but, um, but I am making great progress, or have made great progress. And, um, and yeah, I really, really love how it is, it is turning out. I can't wait. I can't wait to wear it. And I was able to take all of those um, little 5 and 10 gram bits that I had left over from um, knitting the, the um, fingerless gloves for my coworkers and put those in the sweater. So I'm really using like every inch of all of the Hippo for the Holidays that I have bought over the past two years. Feeling pretty good about my, my, my lack of waste. <laughs> okay guys, that is, that's all the, all the knitting that I have. I have a couple of new skeins to show you. Um, I told you that I had joined Knitterly Things um, year-long sock club again this year, and it is um, World of Color, I think it is called. So each month it's a stripey skein that's based around a single color. Uh, for January it was red, so here is the skein that I got. The color wait, is called Light It Up, and it comes with um, a mini in red as well. So you can see there's like red and gray. There's some kind of gray stripe that's going in there and then there's some speckles. I think it's really pretty. I'm interested to see how it's going to turn out. And then um, Julia at Vesper Sock did she announce another rainbow, just a single skein that she was going to put out. I jumped right on it because I am a sucker for rainbow. Um, it is a 12 color striper. And it's called Absolute Rainbow. And look at it, guys. Is that not completely gorgeous? I cannot wait to knit with this. So very pretty. And I opted for a gray mini. I think you could pick gray, black, or maybe even white. I picked the gray one. And it also came with this little tin that has some more light bulb minis in it. Um... And I don't really need any more light bulb minis, but this tin is just adorable. I love little things. So, yeah, really keen on that. I got a new bag. This bag is from Withering Sheep, which used to be called You So and So. Um, and I have several bags from her. 
Oh, my foppish ferret is uh, one of the bags that I got from her. This is her new bag style. It comes with a little center pocket for notions, and then you have the snaps for working with two colors. You can um, feed your yarn through there and snap it so that things don't get um, uh, tangled. And uh, the little notion pocket, which is sewn in there. And then she also, uh, oh, and a drawstring, of course. Just that, that fox. She had a couple other ones. It was a hedgehog, which was adorable. I almost bought two. Um, and like three other animals, I can't remember, but they were super cute. And then she added one of um, one of these. This is like a like a ball bra. What are they called? You know, where you you take your your caked up ball of yarn and you put this around it, and it helps keep it from getting gross and you know collapsing on on itself and stuff like that. Um, so she just threw one of those in there, which was really nice. And I love this pattern and it's, you know, it's kind of elastic, it's kind of stretchy. So yeah, thank you so much. And then lastly, I went and shopped a little bit at Lolo Did It. When I finished my um, hat that I knit in January, I decided that maybe that's what I would do uh, because I really kind of want to continue on and do um, the hippo for the holidays again but I don't want to knit 12 pairs of socks um, and so hats are an option and she also uh, included her Yeti um, she's got a um, a line of yarns like the hippos for the holidays only it's Yeti goes to someplace and so she said that uh, for this year the Yeti yarns could be included and so um, I've decided that I'm just going to knit 12 hats. I want to give, I had already decided last year when I was knitting the fingerless gloves that I wanted to give my coworkers hats for Christmas this year. And I also would love to give some to my family. Um, so I think that um, knitting 12 hats over the year will put me in perfect position to be able to give them as gifts to both my family and my coworkers. And I can, you know, kind of kill kill two birds with one stone by doing the the knit along and being ahead for my Christmas knitting. So I got uh, four Yeti skeins in Worsted and DK. Uh, the one in DK I got is Yeti goes to Lollybrock, which is a new one. And I think Lollybrock is from Outlander, maybe. So the Yeti color is a little bit more brown than, um, than Hippo. Hippo is very gray. Just kind of like a brownie gray, and um, it's got its speckles. And then I also got Yeti goes to Disney. My uncle is a huge Disney fan, so this may be um, the hat that I make for him. Um, he goes to Disneyland like on a weekly basis. Um, here is Yeti goes to the North Pole kind of Christmassy with some blue, uh, which I like a lot. And then lastly, I got Yeti goes to a galaxy far, far away. And if I'm honest, I bought this one with the plan to make something for me, <laughs> make a hat for me, another one, um, because it's got all the colors in it. So yeah, so I will, um, I will definitely have a, a hat knit for you guys next time. I'm going to wind one of those up today and get it cast on so I can get my February hat done. And, uh, and yeah, I figure I can, I can do a hat each month. Um, it only takes a couple of days to knit a hat, especially when you're knitting it out of worsted weight yarn. Um, so there, that is all of the knitting stuff. I do want to talk about um, the, if you guys recall last year, I started out really strong doing, um, Aaron of Bling Your Strings, um, Crafty Bingo. I had my 25 squares all set up and I was marking them off and I was doing really good. And then 
you know, life happened and I completely failed <laughs> at Crafty Bingo. Um, and so I wasn't going to do it again in 2018, but uh, Erin and I talked about it and, you know, she, she pointed out that I didn't have to make it quite as hard on myself. I could simplify things and, and make the goals more attainable for the, the way, for the place that my life is at right now. So I have filled out a new uh, Crafty Bingo card and here it is. You see, I've already marked off a couple of things, which is pretty cool. Uh, so I wanted, want to knit Ron a pair of socks, which I just showed you are finished. I want to knit some pre-2018 stash, so just stuff that I got before 2018. I want to knit myself a scrappy cowl. Um, I already have the yarn wound up for that. I'm just waiting for... Um, one of these sweaters to be, well, actually, honestly, I'm waiting for the um, Brunswick to get finished, and then I will start on that. I want to knit a bulky weight sweater. I have, like, three or four sweater quantities of bulky weight yarn, and I just want to get one of them knit up. Um, I want to make Mom the shawl that I was supposed to make for her last year. It was on my Crafty Bingo. It was one of the things I failed at, um, so I'm hoping to be able to get that made. I want to finish my fireweed socks. That's another thing I failed on last year, um, but I'm definitely going to get that pair of socks finished this year. Yes, for sure. Don't let me bow out, please. Uh, next, I want to knit mom a pair of socks. I think I have that on here a couple of times. So each time I knit her a pair of socks, I can mark one off. I want to knit a pair of colorwork mittens something I wanted to do last year that I didn't actually do. Um, my finish, my blue, yes, finish my blue sands cardigan, which if you guys recall, has everything except for sleeves. It just needs sleeves. So once uh, the two sweaters that I have going are done, that will be the next thing that I get on, hopefully. Knit mom another pair of socks. Knit a colorwork yoke sweater. It's another thing that I have the yarn for, for like, three sweaters. I just need to cast one on. Knit a sock blank. I have several sock blanks. I want to knit one at least. Uh, knit three hats. I've knit one. As you can see my little check mark. Finish your the free your fade shawl. That, that is something that I started last year and I didn't get very far and I had some um, obligation knitting that I had to get done so it got set aside. I want to be able to finish it this year. Next, uh, start the crochet scrappy blanket, which again was on my list for last year. Didn't even get touched. Uh, knit Delaney a pair of socks. I've already done that. Knit the first pair of Christmas socks. You guys know that I have been collecting Christmas yarn with which to knit myself um, a pair of Christmas socks for every day in December. I'd like to at least knit one pair this year. Again, I'm, I'm hoping, with a lot of these things, I'm hoping to be able to do more than that. But because I don't know how the world is going to be uh, over the, the next 11 months, I'm, I'm, I want to give myself the ability to kind of have to take time off if I need to. You know, who knows what, what's going to happen. Knit Aunt Kathy a pair of socks. Knit Delaney a second pair of socks. Knit Dad a cowl. Uh, that's something he asked for. Knit Ron another pair of socks. Finish my scrappy hippo sweater, which is going, as we know. Knit a sweater for somebody. And then lastly, knit Uncle another pair of socks. So pretty simple. I don't see that there will be a, an issue with me being able to get this all done for the year. Um, but again, I'm giving myself lots of time and, and easy, easily obtainable goals. Okay, and lastly, books. I really only have one book to show you guys. Um, I just finished this. This is Mosquito Land by David Arnold. This is his first book. He has uh, two other ones out. And um, I've had this for a long time, but finally picked it up. I listened to it on audio. I have to say, I really, really loved it. If you're a fan of John Green or Rainbow Rowell, then I think that you would probably appreciate this, especially if you're a fan of John Green, um, because I think they have similar writing styles. 
I really, really love this book. This is the story of Mim, uh, which uh, stands for Mary Iris Malone. And she is 16 years old. She discovers that her mom is sick. Her dad, her parents are divorced. She lives in, in um, Alabama, Arkansas, Mississippi, Mississippi, which she calls Mosquito Land. Um, and, uh, and she finds out her mom is sick in Chicago. Cleveland, sorry. <laughs> in Cleveland, and um, on a whim, she decides to hop on a bus, a Greyhound, and go to visit her mom. And, uh, and it's kind of about discovering herself and kind of learning about life on that trip. Again, it's, it's, it's very John Green-esque. Um, Mim is entirely too mature and witty for her, for her age, but, um, but I enjoy that kind of, I, I enjoy that. So anyway, I really liked this and I think the audiobook was fantastic. The narrator did a great job. Uh, I liked it so much that I went ahead and started his second book, which is Kids of Appetite. Um, I am not very far, just a couple, maybe 20 pages in, but um, liking it so far. And then his third book uh, is out on hardback, but the paperback co comes out in uh, May. And so I have pre-ordered the paperback to uh, go along with my set. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really pleased. I always like it when I find an author that just the entire time I'm going, gosh, I just really like this book. This is just really fun. Um, so yeah, there you go, guys. That is, that is it. I am, I'm done. Not going to be very long this time, but I guess that's the way it goes. Um, thanks, everyone, for the support that you have showed me over these past several um, busy weeks and, and, well, let's be honest, busy months. Um, I do really appreciate the love and support. Every single one of your comments, um, both on uh, YouTube and on um, Instagram and on uh, Ravelry, just really touches my heart. I just really, really appreciate it. So you guys are rocking awesome. I, I, I dig every single one of you. Don't ever change, man. Stay the same. You rock. Anyway, I gotta go before I make more of an embarrassment of myself. Have a wonderful rest of your day and happy knitting. Bye.